out of here. Look, somebody got married. Oh, cool. I like their dresses. Okay, watch the other lines. Watch the other yep, lines. Yep, yep. Oh, oh, Man overboard. Man overboard. Man overboard. What? What happened? Get the life ring. Slack out, slack out. Ashton's on the line with the tow line. Go in, he's driving. Here, take the line. <laughs> the severity of what? Of what could have been? Oh, um, so I was on the main deck aft and I heard, I had a, a little earpiece on and I heard man overboard. And I was like, did I hear that correctly? Man overboard. Now, when I hear man overboard, I think, oh, someone just went into the water, fell in the water and went overboard. Um, I heard Ashton. I heard, oh, this, yeah, this is a pretty touch, touchy subject, bro. Um, I heard Ashton scream and I had realised that um, his leg had been caught up in the tow line. Um, I, I didn't want to speak about this. Um, so I rushed down to the swim platform. And obviously me and Ashton have this great chemistry relationship, you know. So um, luckily Riley said, you know, man overboard. Now I'm thinking like he, like someone just went f***ing overboard and popped up, you know. I'm not knowing that, that there was a line wrapped around his, his leg. And, um, yeah, uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, I don't really want to talk about this, but, um, yeah, it was a f***ing, it's like seeing you, you know, seeing your mate scream, um, in agony, and, um, uh, yeah. I know what was going through his mind. In the next two minutes, he was going to die. We were leaving port. So, you know, with Chandler being gone now, the bow operations became became my, my task. I had finished up what, what I was doing, so I thought, let me, go, let me go back and see if I can maybe give a hand to the guys. And when I got there, they were busy with the, the tender maneuver. As they let the tender out, the, the tow line got wrapped around Defender. one of the fenders. And... That's when I was like, Shit, let me jump in. And I went down the stairs onto the swim platform, first mistake, and unwrapped the line from, from the fender. And as I got the line loose, instead of just leaving the line and getting off the swim platform, I just, I held onto the line. And I, I even still remember saying to Riley, watch out for the line, just watch out for the line. And almost as the words had just left my, my mouth, I felt a tug on my ankle. And I, and I, and I looked down, I was just like, I'm wrapped. And I, I went in. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, my first mission was get the, the line unraveled from my ankle. That mission changed to now keep your head above water because I'm being dragged by the yacht and I'm, I, can't, I can't get breath. So now instead of focusing on my ankle, I'm paddling up to get air out of the water. I said to myself, get a big, get a big gasp of air, go down because you need to attend to this ankle. But with the pressure or with the tension of me being dragged, I just couldn't get it un unwrapped. And eventually I was like, this is happening. I remember my foot came up in front of me with, with the yacht here, and I'd mentally prepared myself in that moment that my foot was gonna be, be ripped off. The pressure that I felt around my ankle with that rope is something I've never felt in my life. In, in my head I was like, your foot is gonna be ripped off in front of your face right now. And it was so weird because in that moment, I remember just locking eyes with Brent, the camera guy. And I saw him unwrapping the line and I saw Ross working the line too. And I almost thought to myself, guys, it's, it's too late. And that's when I screamed. When I felt that, that pressure is when I screamed and, and within a split second, I felt, I get goosebumps and, I, and I'm like shaking. But in, 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 in that instance, that tension was just released. And I, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it. You can understand going from, going from being in that state of, of mind when you've come to terms with it and now just that tension gets released, boom. 
I was in complete disbelief and I, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I got given a lifeline. You must understand if my foot got ripped off in, in that water, Captain Lee couldn't turn the boats around and come and fetch me and come and, 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 come and burn, uh, you know, burn the wound closed to stop me from bleeding. I would have literally bled out in that water and I would have died. That is the severity of, of, of what happened. Um, and I think that's what gets us all shook up, you know, and I think that's what get, gets Captain Lee teary. You know, it, it gets me teary, it gets Ross teary. It, that was a real situation. You know, nobody can be blamed for that but myself. I put myself in that situation. Things happen for reasons in life. I'm glad it happened to me and that I'm fine. And if I can save somebody else's life out there through what happened and through them watching, then there's a reason for these things happening. Something might seem negative in the moment, but you will see later on where the positivity came out of it. There were three things that had to happen. Otherwise, Ashton's dead. There was no doubt in my mind that on that day, he dies. The first thing that had to happen is the boat had to come out of gear. Because if I keep going, and it's not out of gear, and he's wrapped in the line, which we later found out that he was, and we're dragging him behind the boat, he's going up and down like a bobber. No, he's not going to drown, because we're still rolling ahead at probably five and a half, six knots. Our boat displaces 703 tons. The tender weighs another six, seven tons. And the line that we use to tow it is Spectre. Spectre won't break. It won't stretch. It will sever whatever it's attached to. We're going to cut his leg off at the ankle because that Spectre line is going to come tight and it's just going to pull like this, and it's going to sever his leg. Two minutes, he's going to bleed out. There's no way we can get back there quick enough to get him out of the water, on board, to a hospital before he's dead. The second thing that had to happen was Riley had to say, man, overboard. Otherwise, I don't take it out of gear. If I don't take it out of gear, he's dead. Riley was the only person that said, man, overboard. And she said it so lightly that I almost couldn't believe what I heard. And I said, what? And from then on, it was total radio silence. I immediately took the boat out of gear because I don't know where he went overboard. Before you took it out of gear, did you get confirmation from elsewhere? Or did you no, I didn't care. All I had to hear was man overboard, boat's out of gear, period. Just, that's instant. The third thing that happened was one of the cameramen, Brett, dropped his camera, stopped filming, and started undoing the line to relieve the pressure. Those three things. Any one of those three that doesn't happen, and I gotta make a phone call, tell somebody I killed their kid. Yeah.